and move actually came at Mansfield. Um, you know, just talk to us about how that move came about. Um, well, again, I'd, I'd done pre-season with Stoke. Um, I think that might have been the year they just got relegated out of the, the Premier League. Um, I'd done the pre-season with Stoke and it obviously it become apparent to me that I'd be going out on loan again. Um, Majin actually um, had spoken to Oldham um, and it probably looked like I was likely to go there. And then um, Dave Flickcroft spoke to my, um, spoke to my agent um, and said, can I just give him a call? Um, so I spoke to him and he, he was he was brilliant. I spoke to him for about an hour and he um, obviously I knew the, the potential the club had at the time and the new training ground um, and things like that. And yeah, so once he, he'd rung me up, um, I spoke to someone at Stoke and got a little bit of advice. And um, yeah, and then I was down there two days later. So just before the start of the season. Yeah, and then it wasn't long before you'd actually signed permanently with Mansfield. Um, you know, at the time, you're a regular starter in the team. And at the time, you know, it, the team actually boasted at that point the best defensive record in the league at that point. Yeah. Um, you know, did, how easy was it to make that move and, and, and really bed in well with your teammates like we've just seen there? Yeah, it was. Um, I, don't, I don't think I started the first one or two league games. And then um, I think... Uh, one, I think Matt Preston picked up a head injury, or, or I think it was something like that. So I got put in, but it was it was a lot different to be fair. Because I think when we were at when I was at Wimbledon and Bristol Rovers, I mean we played played some good football, but it was more about getting into the attacking half and and maybe a little bit little bit more direct and just playing in in the middle of a back four. Um, and then when I went to Mansfield, we were playing a back three at the time. It was very expansive. Um, so I think that that did take some getting used to. It was a it was a different aspect. So I sort of had to sort of had to add to my game in terms of being on the ball a little bit more, uh, maybe in a little bit of a different position. Um, but yeah, no, it was um, it was it was very easy to bed in. I had some brilliant players around me in terms of PSI beside me. It was it was an absolute monster that year. Um, so yeah, that made it um, it made it pretty easy the transition. Yeah, like like Jacob just said there about the you had obviously one of the best defensive records in the league. What what do you put that down to, Ryan? I think it's a, a bit of everything. I think um, one thing I do think as well. I think probably people forget when sort of when you keep clean sheets, they go straight towards the the back the back four, the back three, and the goalkeeper, and say they've been outstanding. But I think it was the way we way we pressed the ball over the pitch. I mean, the amount the energy we had in that side was was ridiculous. I mean, we had Tyler Walker up top, um, CJ could run for days. You know, the way the wing backs got on, we just used to sort of suffocate teams. So we actually sort of did less defending in a sense, maybe. But we were we were we were solid. I think when the when, you know we defended the box really well that year, and I think it was just. Uh, sort of an accumulation of what we did on a Monday to Friday as well. Um, you know, there was a lot of a lot of shape work put in throughout the week, preparing for Saturday. And I think it was just everyone knew their jobs down to a T. There was no there was no stone unturned. Um so yeah it was um it was brilliant. Obviously that season you unfortunately ended up losing out in the playoffs to to Newport. Um yeah sum up that whole campaign as, as best as you can. Still haunts me to this day that. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, it, do you know? What, it, I, I still because I still speak to a few of the lads now. Actually, um, who were in that side, and you know, it just it just baffles me how we just didn't get over the line. Um, we don't, I think to be fair, we done we done everything that season. Um, you know, we we went in a brilliant run. Um, I think it was from sort of September to January. I don't think we, I don't think we lost in sort of. I think it was eighteen or nineteen games. Um, so we set ourselves up um, very well for the second half of the season. Um, and then once it got to sort of down to sort, of, I think it was the sort of last six, seven games. You know, we just we just couldn't buy a win. Um, and it, it's quite odd looking back on it to to sort of put it down to to something where we could have pinpointed something, but you just, we just could not get over the line. And it was obviously going back and forth and, you know, sort of MK Dons were losing games and then we wouldn't win. And then um, it just become a bit of a mess. And I remember I spoke to, we were speaking to one of the lads and we'd, we'd obviously knew we had MK Dons last game of the season. Um, and they were saying, I can't go down to that surely. And then obviously 
we both lost in the second to last day, and then it, in the end, it did. So it was gutting. It was absolutely gutting the the amount of work we'd put in um, to that season. We just couldn't quite go over the line. Yeah, how hard was it to pick yourselves up? Obviously, in the off season afterwards, and then, and then moving forwards to to really, you know, get going after such, you know, like a devastating um, playoff campaign that it was. Yeah, it's, um, I don't think anyone was sort of talking about it really or or sort of anything like that. I think once it had happened, um, and obviously we lost on penalties in the in the playoffs, we sort of um you sort of have your summer to sort of regroup um and then and then go again. Um and then it just quite it didn't just didn't quite work out for us um for whatever reason. Um I think we we actually hit a good bit of form. Um sort of just before November, sort of yeah, back in the September, October. We did hit a good bit of form and then and then we just struggled. Um and you know it might have been a bit of a hangover from the from the season before, but you know it wasn't for a for a lack of effort or or anything like that. I think it was just maybe we just hit probably confidence took a bit of a hit. Um, and then we just got ourselves in a rut and in football, you know, when you're low on confidence you hit a rut, it's, it is sometimes very tough to get out of. Yeah, and then obviously just speaking about last season, you know, that was when sort of the emergence of coronavirus really coming about. Um, as obviously, you know, the football world was changing and adapting to that. You know, how how, how did you adapt, you know, keep both keeping fit, fit and keeping fresh mentally in these times? Yeah, it was um, it was a bit of a weird one. Um, you know, obviously you've gone, gone from, because it just kind of come out of nowhere, didn't it, really, in sort of the way the season ended. Um, yeah. I think we had played Northampton um, the the Saturday before, and then we obviously trained a week. And then they, there was meet, there was talk about sort of the the um, the EFL having meetings about the obviously the game at the weekend, and then it just cut that got called off. And then we said, "Oh, we'll be back in the following Wednesday." So the start bit I think was was pretty easy to be fair, because we always thought we'd be back in the following week or the following week. And then obviously over time, it just kind of went, well, it doesn't look like it's going to, it's going to happen. Um, but I was just, it, it was, it was quite, I wouldn't say it was mentally, mentally tough really, but, you know, obviously being without, being without a football and trying just doing them 5k runs all, all the time, like it does, it does get a bit, little bit, little bit tough. Um, but you know, I think it was it was important as well to sort of have a break off it as well. And we got the sort of um sort of resting and you know, again recharging. And then obviously the the season when we got the dates back, then we could then we could really plan for pre-season. Yeah, and then of course bring it up to date now. I mean, at the time of recording right now, Mansfield at a 13th in League Two. What are your hopes for you know the season going forwards? I think we just we just want to kick on. Obviously, we had a we had a, a bad start to the season, um, and it didn't it didn't quite quite start how we we would have wanted it to. Um, but saying that, I don't we haven't lost an awful lot this season. Um, I think that was the that was the tough part to take. We just couldn't really turn some of them draws into wins, um, you know. And um, it's just in both boxes we had to improve on. So we've, we've managed to do that lately. Um, and then I think from from here on in, I think it's just about just see where it can take us. You know, we've won the last five games in the league. Um, so, yeah, we're in, a, we're in a, a good run of form. And I think at the moment, we're just going to try and get a few more points on the board over the next few weeks and then and then see where we're at come the end of the sort of start of Feb. Um, and then, yeah, we'll just go from there and just keep trying to climb that table.